to Cigar and Whiskey with Yannick Terrier. Hey folks, I've got finally the last interview of the harvest for myself. A fabulous woman who doesn't even look close to her real age. I'll show you Eden Brent. Hello everybody! Um, Eden, you've been here for the whole week because of Blues in Schools. How are you liking it so far? I'm having a ball. I can't believe it's the last day. It's, it's, uh, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet? Yeah, well, you know, I'm it tired. Finishes. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> but I hate that it's over too, so. Okay, give me a moment. Okay. Yeah. Now, here's what I've got about Miss Brent. Uh, her real name is Eden Brent. There's no middle initial. There's no. There's no change to become more flashy on stage. Um, her uh, date, year of birth is 1965. I won't say the date. Um, her place of birth is Greenville, Mississippi, which you still I still live in Greenville. Um, your bio is very short. It says American musician on the independent Yellow Dog label. Um, and you're a blues pianist and vocalist. And you combine boogie woogie with elements of blues, jazz, soul, gospel, and pop. Woohoo! <laughs> um, and that's evi actually quite evident in your um, last album. Um, Jigsaw Heart. Thank you. <laughs> I was about fragmented heart, but <laughs> that's not the case. Um, your awards span a few uh, a few years. 2006, you were the International Blues Challenge winner. Right. Uh, but I don't know what category. Uh, solo duo category. I mean, there's just two categories. Okay. Band or not. So solo in your case? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and, and, and in 2009, you had two Blues Music Awards for Artist of the Year and Acoustic Album of the Year. Uh, yeah, Acoustic Artist of the Year. Okay. And acoustic Album of the Year. Oh, okay. Uh, 2010, Pine Top Perkins Piano Player of the Year. Correct. Given by the Blues Foundation, which is a big thing. Um, and then various nominations for other awards in two th between 2008 and 2011. Yeah. Right. Uh, your discography spans... Album of the Year. Album of the Year, okay. Acoustic Album of the Year again, uh -huh. but I didn't win. So, you know, some people say three-time Blues Music Award winner. I do not want to discount all those losses, so I like to say eight-time Blues Music Award loser. <laughs> then that sounds kind of more bluesy to me. <laughs> it does, actually. No, um, man, just to be invited to the party is a real kick for me. I, I love it. In 2003, you, uh, your first album was Something Cool under Little Boogaloo Records. Well, actually, you know, that record was released in South Africa first. Okay. So 2002? Uh, records. Uh, I, not 2003. Okay. Yeah. And then it got re-released in the U.S.? Well, you know, out of, out of the trunk of my car. <laughs> so, or a release such as it is. Okay, so basically you were it's selling like it here. like letting a balloon go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> have a balloon. Have a, balloon. Uh, have a disc. Uh, 2008, you were you uh, wrote Mississippi number one, where we got to actually get a huge sample of your your boogie style. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's one. the record that, that won Acoustic Album of the Year. And then in 2010, it got no troubles, which right. also followed. It was more. Um, that was New Orleans sound. Yeah. Yeah. More, more North. recorded in New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, and then in 2014. Jigsaw Heart, right? Which is a little bit more on the ballad side. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. More sentimental. Yeah. Um, you've always been solo. It's never been you and four other members traveling together. Ah, uh, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I travel with a band. Any particular that you, that particular people that you always like to chum up with in regards well, to travel? Well, I can afford mostly. <laughs> you don't have grown up money to pay them. That, that's really what happens and, and and I think that's why you find people uh, I mean in fact a lot of very notable people working with younger artists because younger artists are happy to play for a little or next to nothing they can afford to do it they don't have families yet and they're happy to get the experience you know? now, speaking of grown up you're 
Oh, right. I put myself on that side. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. And if you want to turn your chair so that you're more comfortable instead of being... Oh, Jesus. You okay? Yeah, you, I'm you're, fine. you're sort of on the edge there. And Let me scoot back some. Uh-oh. Oh, that's okay. All right, here we go. It's a fear of Iron Man, so yeah. it's not that much of an issue. All right. Okay. Um... You've got a lot of a lot of things that factoids that are very interesting. I know that for a fact you, uh, after trying to learn the piano, the boogie woogie style, you eventually uh, made friendships with a, uh, Abby Boogaloo Ames. That's correct, Abby. Abby. Uh, Abby. Okay, thank you for correcting that. Uh, at what age did you actually uh, start taking lessons from Abby? between you and Abby. Yeah. Fortunately. Yeah, we, uh, reminds me of Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not swatting flies, you're not singing the blues. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were, we were friends for, uh, 16 or 17 years, yeah. Uh, uh, apart from that, the, 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 your friendship was so remarkable that, uh, PBS filmed a documentary in 1999 titled Boogaloo and Eden. Sustaining the sound? Yes, that's right. Uh, and then... Uh, precious memories. Precious memories, yeah. Uh, and then you played, uh, uh, also along the factoids, you played at, at the Kennedy Center in uh, the 2000 Republican Convention and the 2005 Presidential Inauguration Ceremony where you shared the stage with B.B. King. Well, that's not really true. Okay. I shared the bill. Okay, but that's you different. didn't... Sharing the stage would mean both of you on stage at the same, at the same time. time. That's correct. And that's not the case. Yeah. But that was at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. No, nah, it wasn't. It wasn't? I don't remember. I really, I'm sure I don't remember where that was. Okay. That was in Washington, D.C. The Waldorf Astoria is in New York City. <laughs> Right. Did you compose an original piece to defend your thesis? No, no, no. I didn't. I didn't finish in jazz. I finished in music theory. Oh, did you? I was studying jazz and I was failing. Okay. I mean, I wasn't making. I wasn't making failing grades. I just was not achieving the, what the you level were, of musicianship that I wanted was to be seeking. So okay. oh. that's what led me to boogaloo and the blues. So after university. Yeah. Well, in, be you know, in between. During Apart from that, another factoid is that she's got sisters, and she appears with her singer-songwriter sisters Jessica and Bronwyn on the Brent Sisters Party Dress album, yeah. which showcases your mother's songs. Correct. And that was in 2012. Yeah, my, yeah. my sisters and I, are, 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 we're all three songwriters. Okay. And my mother was a songwriter. And, uh, what kind of songs did she write? Were they, you know, uh, they, they weren't boogie woogie, they weren't blues, um, folk? Not to pigeonhole it. You know, I, I don't really know. What, that's, that's a hard thing to say because to me, a good song is a good song. And it's the production of a song that makes it country or jazz or pop.
actually visit her website. It's a fun one to visit. There you go. Very easy, simplistic. Well, thank you, Eden.